Like way, way to be original. Chill, there we go. There's my arm. Get the shoulder over here. How'd you get my size right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a onesie. <laughs> When you think of the Netherlands, you obviously think of Amsterdam, the architecture, the bridges, and the canals. But when I think of the Netherlands, I also think about tulips. Like, a lot of tulips. In fact, tulips for miles. Welcome to the European half of Moments in Time. We've left Japan and traveled 5,700 miles to the capital of the Netherlands, Amsterdam, just in time for tulip season. My co-host in Amsterdam is my good friend Albert Dross. Apart from being a talented Dutch landscape photographer and teaching with me on different photo tours around the world, Albert is also well known for his beautiful tulip photos. So first thing in the morning, he took me to scout a nearby tulip field. Oh God, I should have brought my boots. <laughs> uh, Actually, it's okay here. It's not so bad here. It's okay. And these tulips are in really nice shape. They haven't opened all the way yet. You can do a nice wide angle shot with all the lines. Yeah, they're really concentric. And also, we can walk in the field, so you go low and you kind of eliminate all the lines and just have an endless sea of tulips. And the trick is to get a good tulip image, is to actually find that nice tulip or that different one or that little cluster that looks just right on the frame. The best thing you can actually do is just follow Albert around until he finds something and then just take his spot. Yeah, that's what he does. <laughs> is that a white tulip? Yeah. In the center of this room? Yeah, I think so, yeah. And that breaks up the monotony of the single color and gives the eye something to focus on in the frame. Yeah, so for us, those tulips, they're super nice because there's something different in the frame. For the farmer, it's not good. No? Because, yeah, they, they, they are sick, these tulips. And before they behead all the tulips and harvest them, they're going to remove all these sick tulips. So all the tulips that we like to photograph, they will remove. Um, for the bulbs, because yeah, they're, they're sick, so. Yeah, I can't wait to talk to the farmer about this. This spot's very unique because you have the very iconic Holland windmills and the tulips together. Yeah. So this would become a very popular spot with photographers yeah. because it, it really communicates this is the Netherlands. Yeah, exactly, tulips, windmills. But for me, as a photographer around this area, I'm only satisfied with of course, this classic frame, but I want the best conditions. I, w I wanted to get this spot this year with fog on the tulips. Wow. You know, and then the windmills rising above it. So you have a shot, tulips, fog, windmills. But unfortunately this year, it was so windy during the tulip season that we never got any fog. Last year, we had a few uh, beautiful days with fog uh, in the morning, which was amazing. But then the fields were not positioned correctly. You know, and these are shots it will take you years and years to get because you only have maybe one or two weeks every year to try and get these shots. And if the weather doesn't cooperate, you have to wait another year. But that makes it more special when you get it. Exactly. And even more unique. Yeah. I want to take all these shots, which I will maybe never get. But if you have these shots in your head, you keep trying to get them. And while trying to get these impossible shots, you will get other shots that are also great that you maybe don't expect, but at least you're out there. And if you're out there, you can do anything. After shaking the mud off our shoes, we left the fields with plans to return at the end of the day for better lighting. In the meantime, I met with my friends and local commercial photographers, Richard Turborg and Adrian Summerling, and I told them to pack their camera bags, but I didn't tell them why. I'm better with crossing the street than the bike path. Once we found a spot I liked, I finally revealed my little plan. So far, I've been given some ridiculous photography challenges throughout the series, so I wanted to do things a little bit differently and put you guys on the spot. Makes me feel really good. I don't have to work as hard. So I'm gonna challenge both of you. You bastard. You... <laughs> no, it's a good thing. You love me for this, trust me. But here's the thing. You have to photograph a really attractive model in your own style, and you each have 15 minutes. I reckon we find an attractive model. Well, we couldn't find one, so you're stuck with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. nice. So if you, if you guys can make me look good, you can make anybody look good. And I even brought some things. I'm not sure what these things are, but they might help you. Got this it. Some sort of light or something. Head or tail? 20 cents. <laughs> Tails. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
Me first, you mother... And start. You suck. <laughs> okay, go. I'm going to go this way. Let's see if I can find something fun. I feel really good about this. <laughs> yeah, because you don't have to do shit. <laughs> Let's see. Amsterdam always have like these nice, how you call it, uh, facades of a building. Oh, here I might see something cool with a little bit of blue. See what we get. This is a camera, I guess. If you could stand, let's see. I'll have you stand right here. Okay. A little bit, one more down. So we'll go one more. Down. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, slightly. Face forward. There we go. How's the and hair? That's perfect. All right. It's a little bit straight. There awesome. we go. I'll have you look outside. Shoulders a little bit outside as well. There we go. Hold it there. One, two. Nice. Cool. I got my first one. Let's keep going. Okay. <laughs> Still got a few more minutes. Thinking for a fun thing. A nice place, maybe a little bit of color. I love color. Color would be great. That bridge, got it. Yeah, it's prettier. I'll make one like here and I'll make one with the light in front of me. So now I'll have you put on this. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's a Pikachu outfit. Really? I have the same one at home. No way. No, I don't. <laughs> and now you're running through the streets. I didn't expect this. <laughs> I thought I was going to be safe, man. Like, I, I didn't think we could do anything like that. Leg, 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 right. leg, leg, leg. There we it's go. It's okay over the shoes, right? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> wow, no, that's seriously a full body. Yep, that's leg number one. It's like one. a onesie. <laughs> yep, it is a onesie. <laughs> it's a Pikachu onesie. <laughs> yep. Like, way, way to be original. Cool, there we go. There's my arm. Got the shoulder over here. How'd you get my size right? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Look to me. One, two. Got it. <laughs> like a buzz. One, two. And I have one more on the top so I can get the bridges. <laughs> Smack that in the middle. There we this go. This is really warm. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna, hot. That's the way you used to throw it up. One, two. And can you jump? I don't know how well you can jump. Can you do a jump? <laughs> go. Three, two, one. Got it. Thank you. <laughs> like a buzz. Thanks, man. Richard's photos were pretty hilarious, but now it was Adrian's turn. Let's see how he fares without the Pikachu onesie. Okay, now let's go somewhere out of the sun. Um, I saw a black wall in the I shade. I don't think I'm going to use black. All right, let's go. You stay here? Yeah, better stop. Okay, let's go here. Let's take a picture, I think. Let's see here. Yes, let's do it here. Can you sit here? Semi-shady, right? <laughs> yeah, not only that, it's your height. <laughs> Just kidding, man. Okay, we're gonna do a composite. Uh, first, I'm gonna shoot a background picture where I'm gonna put you in. And after that, with the same light, I make a picture of you. And later on, I, uh, in the post process, I make a giant out of you, yeah? This is a pretty area. I think this looks great as a background. You're gonna be here in the water. Okay, great. <laughs> I can't wait to see that. Now I have the background pictures. Okay. Now I have to make sure that I take a picture of you with the same uh, light. But now I'm gonna, if I take a picture of you from this height, you will be just small into the water, huh? So I have to go down. Do you have a camera? I do. Do you want me to get my camera? Yeah, can you pick okay. your camera? Let me grab my camera. I have to go low on him, because if I'm really low, around here, uh, and I put him in the scene, he can be a really tall giant. Uh, we can take the picture here. Okay. Yeah. Can you get the landscape out of it? We're just gonna stand in the same direction, you're gonna stand here. Can you hold it with one hand? Yes. You go down and you go like this. And then you bend your knees a little bit, there's more action in it. Okay, I'm gonna lay down on the ground. Okay, can you go a little bit higher now? And bend a little bit more to the camera. Yeah, like this. Okay, I think we have it. Time's up, yeah? 15 yeah. minutes? <laughs> I have no idea what to expect. I, I didn't expect to be wearing a Pikachu outfit today. That was pretty <laughs> I'm sorry amazing. about that. No, no, actually, I, I, I may have to buy one to, to take all over the world now. Yeah, there you go. This Pokemon power. <laughs> Got so, this. I didn't see anything that you shot through the camera. Are, are you going to be doing some post-processing? Yeah, uh, I think I'll be doing a lot of post-processing because it's like a very sunny day. And uh, I want to cut the light and put the focus on you and do a little bit of toning. So I'll be cutting down the light, doing a little bit of contrast, and doing a little bit of toning to make it look, you know, like cinematic, fancy. Cinematic, all there right. There you go, there Looking you go. To it. Adrian, 
Yeah, well, it, of course it needs a lot of post-processing <laughs> because it's you. Oh. <laughs> no, just kidding. Of course. No, does. of course, I have to cut you out and I have to place you in the water. I cut some of your legs, of course, because you're standing in the water and not on the water. And some shadow on the water. Normally, water doesn't receive much shadow because this is so dirty, it does. I need to add a reflection because it needs to be look real. And then if it's, everything goes good, uh, you should look like a giant in the water with a camera pointing at me. And the other one, because I take two pictures, I also like to process that because it's uh, just a bit of zen for me to, to sit behind a computer and make you even more beautiful. <laughs> now that I have a bunch of new photos of myself, let's head back to the tulip fields with Albert and our photo tour group to chat with Marcel from Polder Pride, the tulip growing collective that owns this, the largest tulip field in the world. The tulip season is, is going to end pretty soon, right? Here? In the fields? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because after selecting and after the flower is full, mm. we cut off the flowers. Our main goal is to produce bulbs. Okay. And the bulbs start to grow when the flower is off. Because now the food of all the plant is going to the flower. And we don't want it. He beheads them. He decapitates them. <laughs> I don't know if debudding is the correct word. That's what we use. Debudding sounds better than, than decapitating. <laughs> I like it. The last few years, the, the tourists are getting more and more, uh, how do you call it, brutal. Yeah, aggressive. <laughs> yeah, they start to go in the fields and splash the plants. And there's now uh, some marketing going on to yeah. To the tourists to avoid this. So that's my question to you. You are welcome on all, all the fields. You can go in the path, but don't step on the plants, please. You showed me a few articles from uh, different news sources of destructive tourism. So these articles saying tourists are going to Holland and destroying these fields yeah. by taking selfies. Yeah. Flowering tulip fields are very good for promoting the tulips, but a lot of tourists think they were just planted for them. They don't realize they are planted for uh, production and that people earn a living with it. This campaign started to ask the tourists to pay attention and be careful. Most of the time they are free to enter the fields up to a certain level. Tulips in the Netherlands are uh, grown here because of the perfect climate in Holland. They also tried growing tulips in other countries, but it's much harder because the sun is stronger, the, the summers are much hotter, and the winters are way colder, and tulip bulbs are sensitive for frost. Do you think that the tulip tourism helps the tulip business? Yeah, for sure because people that are coming to watch the fields, they like the image, they like the color, and they want to bring spring at home. He grows these, he's allowed to take them, yeah. but if, if you come here visiting, don't, don't do Please that. Please don't do it there. <laughs> Standard tulip has six flower leaves. We think, as a company, there comes a moment that uh, consumers think, that's a little bit boring. We have started to invest in uh, double varieties, they call it. They are, have m way more flower leaves for a more decorative effect. This is your favorite tulip? Yeah. And it's called? Denmark, and it's uh, multicolored, red with a yellow edge. As a photographer, this was the one that I was drawn to first. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the reason is very interesting because these are the same colors of a vivid sunset. So next year you want me to plant and think of the sunset and then this variety in the right position? Yes. So next year, yeah, orient the field if this is possible. We want rows of tulips leading into an old windmill where the sunset's right behind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I do my best, <laughs> but I don't promise. After chatting with Marcel, I took some time to practice shooting the tulips while we waited for better light. I was finally able to get the shot I envisioned later when we wrapped up the day with an incredible sunset. Next week, we'll be exploring Holland's picturesque Windmill Village and meeting with some locals for a photo walk around the famous Amsterdam canals. 
If you've enjoyed this tulip-filled adventure, please like this video so YouTube will recommend it to more photography and travel enthusiasts. And please, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. That's a nice frame, actually. Hey, Albert. Yeah. You live here. Yeah. So that means you have a home field advantage, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs>